Welcome to the shop, Steve here at SKS Props, and in today's video, I've got the follow-up to Sub-Zero's mask, Scorpions, from the brand new Mortal Kombat. Now, this mask, of course, is made all out of my HD foam, which you can find over at Blick Art Materials, and just like the previous version, there's a free PDF file that you can download directly from my website, so you could build right along with me. Now, this mask, just like Sub-Zero's, is not 100% accurate. It is a lot of artistic licensing going on in some areas of it, but it's good enough for cosplay, it's good enough for a movie premiere, it's good enough to have fun. And I wanna show you what it takes to put this mask together, so let's go ahead and get started. I used the base patterns from Sub-Zero's mask to help me create the templates for Scorpion. Parts A and B will be traced onto some six millimeter HD foam. While all the other cuts can be at a 90 degree, the top of the mask needs to be at a 45 degree angle. This cut is made with a large utility knife and make sure to keep your off cut because it has the opposite angle we're going to use it later on. I heat up the foam to start to get the gradual curve to the mask and I add a strip of 2mm foam to the back. This small strip will help the mask retain the curve and make sure that this piece never goes flat. I heat form part B and go ahead and attach that to the upper jaw. Notice with this inner support that it's not glued level, it's glued slightly back to give the mask a tiered effect. To make sure that the lower jaw also retained its curve, an additional strip of 2mm foam was also glued to the back side. Part C is traced onto our off cut and it's also cut at a 45 degree angle. As you can see this part will line up with the 45 degree that was already cut to make the top of the mask. Weldwood contact cement is added to the angled cut of both pieces and this is left to dry. After the contact cement has cured, the two part C pieces can be glued on to part A. Now don't worry about the seam in the middle, this will be covered up later on. I draw a line about midway through part C, this will give me a good guideline so I can use my rotary tool to flatten the top. I decided not to add a completely separate piece like you see in the movie, and it's because I feel the mask is too big and it sticks way too far away from his face. I wanted to shrink these pieces to make it fit my face a little bit better. All the foam that had been sanded down can now be heat sealed. Continue to keep the curve of the mask, I glued two additional 2mm strips to the upper and lower jaw. Part D can now be traced and cut out of some 2mm foam. Glue is applied to the middle of this piece and is attached to the mask. Just make sure not to glue down the two strips that are on either side. Part F will go underneath these later on. I cut two small strips of 2mm foam. A tiny piece is glued right in between the nostrils and then part E will be glued on top. This will help bump it out. And like I would mentioned earlier, you can see here where part E covers up that central seam. The nostrils can now be glued down on either side of part E. Part F can now be traced onto some 2mm foam and cut out. This piece is going to be glued under Part D down the front of the mask. Now I take a 10mm HD foam triangle dowel and glue it to the side of the mask. This piece is attached to the side and then follows the curve of Part F down the front. Something I should have done beforehand was score and heat the detail lines on part D. But because it's already attached, I just put a piece of cardstock underneath and I still use my heat gun. Part G can now be traced and cut out of some 2mm foam, and this time I did score and heat it before I attach it to the mask. I use my scissors and a rotary tool to remove part of the triangle dowel. This is where part G is going to be glued flush with the cheek. Part G is glued to the top of the nose of the mask and then I slowly work my way around. I drew some detail lines with a pencil on the mask earlier. These are now going to be inscribed into the foam with a wood burning tool. If you do not have a wood burning tool, you could also do the score and heat method on these pieces before it's assembled. I take part H and I transfer and cut that out of some 4mm foam. Using my rotary tool I freehand bevel the top and the bottom of this piece, making sure that my lower bevel is a little bit bigger than the top. Once completed this piece can conform to the shape of the mask and be glued to the bottom of part A.
With part H in place, now the two strips on either side of part D can be glued down. I use a small sculpting tool just to make sure that it's pressed at a tight angle and then wrap it around to the back side. Part I can now be transferred, scored, heat, and cut out of some 2mm foam. These small strips can be glued in place on either side right in front of the front support. I cut some thin strips of 2mm foam. These are going to be used to detail the teeth areas. The first one is placed along the upper jaw. The second one wraps from the underside of the chin, across, and then back under. For the band that runs across the lower jaw, two small strips are just glued onto a larger piece of 2mm foam. This band is cut at an angle on either side to match the curve of the dowels and then glued into place. Part J can now be cut and scored. This piece is going to be glued to the front of the dowel and then wrap around to the underside of the jaw. Checking out my reference, it looks like there's supposed to be one more strip here at the bottom. So I use my rotary tool to make all these flush and then just glued a strip in its place. Two more small strips are glued to either side of the lower jaw and then wrapped around to the underneath. My rotary tool can now be used to clean up the dowels at the bottom and the small strips on either side. Alright, to be honest with you, from all the references, I really can't tell what these designs are, but I just made something up and we're going to go with that. So go ahead and take part K and transfer that onto some 2mm foam and cut it out. These pieces are just glued to either side of the mask and then wrap around to the back. And if you find out what these are later on, feel free to change your templates. On the movie poster, it looks like he has a bunch of battle damage, and it looks really eroded and acid etched, so I start by marking this out with a pencil. I'm going to achieve this look by using a round tip on the end of my wood burning tool. This is a great way to get an organic damage look, because the wood burning tool is cauterizing the foam. Now you see all that smoke that's coming off of it? Just like any time we are heating or burning foam, you always want to make sure to wear your respirator. This pitted battle damage is also applied to the lower chin. Now I'm really liking how this effect came out, but I think it's a little too crisp, so I'm going to use my rotary tool to knock it down just a bit. This will make these areas look like they've been worn even more by the elements. After I'm finished with my rotary tool, I go ahead and heat seal my mask one last time. To seal my foam mask, I'm going to be using two light coats of Plasti Dip. After the Plasti Dip had cured, I sprayed on some Montana Metallic Effect Gold. For the areas that had the worn away battle damage, I sprayed on some Rust-Oleum Hammered Metal. As the case with most of my builds, I'm going to start off with a wash of Mars Black and a 1 inch mop brush. This paint is applied over the entire surface and then a lot of it is mopped up with a damp paper towel. For the darker areas on the mask, I'm going to be applying some Utrecht brand Iridescent Antique Gold. For the parts of the mask that have the highlighted gold versions, I'm going to be using some Golden brand Iridescent Bronze. Now as the case with most metallics, you do not want to add any water to them.
Now because I felt the dark areas of the mask weren't quite dark enough, I'm going to use some FX brand gauntlet and mix that in with the Utrecht brand gold that I'd used earlier. This new paint mixture just sets up more of a contrast and you can tell a big difference when lights are shown on either side. To paint the battle damage areas, I start by going back and applying some more Mars Black. This will hopefully make these areas look a little bit more grimy and dirty. Liquitex brand Iridescent Rich Silver is then dry brushed over the battle damage. Again, I'm not adding any water and because I'm dry brushing, it's hitting the highest spots, making the details of the battle damage really pop. Using a liner brush and some more of that watered down Mars Black, I go in and start to paint some of the details that I had added earlier. And you gotta admit, for a metallic sheen, these acrylic paints did a fairly decent job. Now I have other mask videos where I've done straps that could be adjusted, especially if you wanted the cheek sections on this particular mask still open. But if you'd like to wear your PPE underneath, then we're going to do the same technique of gluing small strips on either side. The elastic from your mask can then be fed through these strips and placed behind your ears like normal. So you all can see the steps that I took to put together Scorpion's Mask from the brand new Mortal Kombat. Now while it may not be 100% accurate, it's a fun, quick build and I hope that some of you try that. Again, the PDF for this is completely free, it's downloadable over on my website, and if you are building any of my builds or using HD foam, be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I want to see your creations. Until next time, build your best with the best. HD foam.